Um, Tony, I mean, you work with youngsters that have experienced all kinds of abuse, and, and I imagine no one's more on the side of children um, than you and your organisation. Um, and yet, you don't think this was the right approach. That's right. We're very pleased that these perpetrators have been brought to justice and they've committed terrible crimes against some really vulnerable women and young children. What we want to make sure, though, is that those vulnerable women and children weren't put at more risk by the use of this informant, who is but a convicted child rapist. Why doesn't the end rapist. justify the means? Why doesn't have those 18, you know, people behind bars and indeed the whole organisation, which had dozens and dozens more involved, mm. being exposed and exploded and hopefully dismantled. Why doesn't that justify the use of, of one person whose past we don't like? So we absolutely know that, that informants need to be used by the police to break some of these really difficult gangs, and you have to deal with some very dangerous people to, mm. to do that. But using a, a convicted child rapist, when you've got a situation where children are already being groomed and applied with drink and drugs, just doesn't seem to us to be the right approach. In other cases like this across the country, uh, the same access has been granted and, uh, and gained without using these kind of criminals to get access. Uh, Neil, it's interesting that Tony's saying it doesn't seem to be the <coughs> right approach, and it certainly jars when you see the detail mm. of this case. A convicted child rapist was paid £10,000 or his part in what led to, eventually, the uh, convictions of these 18 people. Well, yeah, I can imagine, I can understand why it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths, but you have to understand that it is the fact that this informant has a previous conviction for sexual offences, which makes him valuable as an informant. You mm. know, it's no good sending on somebody into that situation who has a different background in criminality because he wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to fit in. You have to have credibility. So why we know don't, that we in... in other vice areas like drugs, uh, police will use undercover cops, as it were, to go in and, and expose these things. Why is, is something like this different then? Why would it be more useful to have someone who's convicted of that crime? Why couldn't you use a policeman? Well, I mean, an undercover police officer has to understand, because of the, the, the work that I did, I had to understand the commodity completely. Um, the commodity, the unfortunate term, but in this case, you, you couldn't have that kind of credibility as a police officer. It would be just too too much to actually learn. You couldn't pretend well enough. No, you couldn't. You couldn't pretend mm. well enough. I mean, it's interesting you mentioned drugs offences. You know, your ten thousand pounds is spent on on uncovering a cannabis factory probably every week, and and that doesn't and that makes no impact on the market. They, they, sadly, uh, I think uh, Tony, the reality is that this is. Uh, a terrifyingly uh, ordeal for um, the, 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 pe the, perpetrator, the people to be perpetrated on, the people, the victims. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, when it comes down to it, majority of the comments we're getting this morning, and you can't get away from it, Neville says the end justifies means 18 perverts are out of circulation. Uh, the, ultimately, that if there are protection being offered to children because these 18 people have gone, then paying £10,000 to one convicted child rapist surely has to be a benefit. And, and as I said, we're a child protection charity and we're extremely happy that these perpetrators are, are now behind bars and they can't put uh, further young women and girls at risk. But it's not the payment so much as the, as the risk that the, the vulnerable women and girls were put at during the course of the investigation. It's really concerning you. The police, no matter what, what tactics they need to use, they can't have utter control. Of course it's concerning. Sorry to push you on this. Of course it's concerning. Nobody thinks it's a, uh, you know, a wonderful notion and everyone's celebrating. Mm. But it's, it's it, between a rock and a hard place, the choice here. And if, you know, as Neil says, you can't get away without having the mindset of someone who conducts these horrific crimes. You couldn't mm. fool those around you without having it. It's a different thing. Why not use it? Because we're already hearing there could be gangs like this in every city in the UK. Well, you're right. This is uh, an issue that affects communities uh, across the United Kingdom. And in the other trials that we've seen over the last few years, these kind of informants haven't needed to be used to, to this kind of scale. Mm. It's really clear to us that the children who are at the centre of the case shouldn't be put at further risk during the course of the investigation. Do you worry, Neil, that um, by setting this precedent and it becoming public and this uh, convicted child rapist being paid £10,000, this maybe opens the floodgates to other people manipulating the police in terms for, for, for their support in this sort of situation? Because he wasn't necessarily, and if you read the transcripts, he wasn't necessarily the most reliable of witnesses. No, I pity the poor police officers who actually had to handle this informant, because he sounded like a nightmare. But that is quite often the problem with informants. They, they can be unpredictable. That's why you have to have very strict guidelines, agreements, and constant risk assessments. You know, mm. Police do this very carefully, and they've become very good at handling informants as well. 
But there's an important part of this I should point out, is that sexual offences are the most difficult offences to get successful prosecutions at court. They're more, far more difficult than any other kind of detective work. And we must use every tool in the box because we're, we're fighting against a court system which doesn't want to convict, convict sex offences. OK, well, thank you very much for joining us both this morning. That is Tony Stoa from the NSPCC and Neil Woods, who is a former undercover operative. We really appreciate your opinion this morning. Uh, Sharon on Facebook says, This man, irrespective of his past, has done a good deed. People are behind bars. Some children are safe again. Don't people see that this is a good thing?